perfectly fine. Um, so let's see what we are going to do here today. First of all, I just want to explain how all the things are connected and how you deal with um, repositories and um, packages and the TER and extension keys and stuff like that uh, by using the localization manager as an example because currently there is um, an upcoming new version w because um, there hasn't been too many versions I think for over a year now because we had to deal with several conceptual things um, and there was a completely different uh, approach for CMS 9 and we have to uh, combine all that stuff so currently th there should be a new version for CMS 8 so that we will then have a base uh, working on uh, for CMS 9 and other things that are built on top of that. So first of all let's take a look at the my extension section on tip3.org because this is uh, where we manage extensions that should be officially visible in the TER and not just available via GitHub, GitLab packages or whatever and therefore um, you can use your own extension keys and as you can see we have quite a lot of extension keys um, this is not to just keep them for ourselves um, these were just extension keys that we thought could be good ideas when we met other people at uh, the type 3 developer days we had qu uh, kind of sessions where we sat there and registered extension keys so if you think that there is an extension key that you want to make use of and which could be useful for you feel free to ask us so we can even transfer that because this can be done in the on that page here too so first step when you um, are yeah, aiming to use uh, or to provide an extension for uh, for the public use um, in the official top of three repositories you should register an extension key here so what we did is we have the l10 n manager um, extension too, but actually in, in this case the Elton N manager is not ma directly maintained by us so we don't own the extension key it's owned by um, the company Luctimize which is Daniel Zielinski who actually um, coded most of the stuff together with Casper in the early days of localization manager um, I'm just um, a, a bit uh, confused now because currently what you can't, can't see there on the other side of this um, camera there is um, a fish tank and the fish tank is currently maintained by Petra because uh, there were some problems with the with the air pump so uh, if there are some, some noises or, or other things and, and the light feels different because this is currently the light of the uh, fish tank that is Bli I'm blinded by the lights currently. Uh, so doesn't matter. So we have the extension key, which is L10 N Manager. Then we have um, repositories where we actually put um, them. For example, we can go to GitLab. Uh, we are um, more to GitLab into GitLab because um, we have more options to work. For example, with um, closed repositories there uh, without having uh, to have a paid plan which is uh, not possible on github and uh, I like the interface a bit better so this is why we are on GitLab but uh, it doesn't matter where you actually are the um, major um, thing you should take care of is that there is something people can um, use to communicate with you about your extensions and to file issues and stuff like that so we have some personal projects here and as you can see there is a l10 n manager in here too and uh, this is the private part so um, th these private repositories we are using for example for um, paid support so uh, when when you uh, are an SLA client or when we had a crowdfunding uh, for an extension we give people who actually supported us and um, helped us to maintain things um, 
a kind of early access so you can have the things um, that are cutting edge development state um, a bit earlier maybe even month earlier uh, than other people and you can have more impact on the development phase so it's not about bug fixing stuff like that because bug fixing would be something that can be done in the public too but it's about new features about discussing uh, things and uh, getting things done the way uh, you want them to be done so this is something we do in these uh, private repositories on um, GitLab. There is a public repository too. I can just go to a new tab here. GitLab Code is Care. And as you can see, we have the Grid Elements repository in here, the Elton N Manager. There's DMM Job Control, which will be uh, something which we are currently not working at but uh, in the near future because there are some people asking for um, a close beta or um, uh, support because they actually want to make use of this extension in version 9.2 currently it's available I think only up to 6 so uh, the next steps would be to provide that for um, version 7 and 8 uh, in within a kind of make it run phase uh, then the next step would be the make it right phase where we will provide something which will be running on CMS 8 with out uh, without making uh, use of um, deprecated methods and without using um, the marker base approach and after that we could do a make it shiny and new version for CMS 9. So if you're into DMM job control and you want to make use of it, this will still be supported, although it's currently marked obsolete in the TR. But this is one of the extensions that we will take care of uh, within the next weeks. But today it will be um, about Elton N Manager um, in the first place, and then we will see how far we can go and how far we can get uh, within the time frame. I actually uh, scheduled it for uh, I think 5 p.m. or so. Um, depends on how things are going and uh, if, if we will show some other things too. Okay, so let's just refresh the live state here. So, as you can see, we have a localizer demo site, which is uh, something that we are using for testing the, the Elton and Manager itself, and uh, an extension that we are currently building on top of it, which is still closed source and not publicly available because this will include um, a kind of interface for several translation services that, that then will be connected to the localization manager so we can um, provide or you can provide actually you can provide uh, connections to several uh, translation services to your clients within your type of three projects so uh, the idea is that there will be um, kind of selector and a card and some other workflow um, steps that you can uh, implement uh, and then connect to an uh, existing APIs of translation services. Uh, I can show you later how this will be working. Currently we have the alternate manager here and we have usually this is uh, the thing that you have to create uh, card configurations or other current page for example would be um, good thing to go because then you can go to a page and just do whatever you like with it um, because this has is a configuration which is not connected to um, a certain page or so so we can just check for the languages we can export stuff we can go to the XML so actually this is working already but we introduced some new features so this has is something that still should be tested and um, let's see if this is already working here for example
example, there should be a page, and in that page there should be language. And within language, this is one of the new features that we are going to provide with the next version, which is hopefully to be uploaded within this session. So um, you can expect it to be um, available in the TR today. Um, one of these features is that you can exclude elements from localization manager exports of selected languages. So this is, for example, to make sure that this page will never go to Espanol because it should not be available there. Uh, sometimes this is due to cultural reasons because, for example, when you are in a specific area with specific religious beliefs or specific uh, other cultural things, uh, that you have to take care of. You want to, don't want to show content there that <coughs> is forbidden to be shown there. Or you can say, okay, we have a campaign which is only running uh, within certain um, areas, within certain languages, so uh, you can exclude stuff uh, from being exported. And um, then we have the additional localization manager might be overridden by alternate manager configuration. You can say, okay, Translation settings, this page should not be translated, uh, so it should be excluded from translations and always included within translations. Um, the last one is quite interesting when you want to provide context, for example, when you want to show um, people what the uh, sites that they are translating are actually about. So there might be a kind of a default page that you always want to send together with some other pages so that the information is more clear. Um, exclude from translations is self-explaining and um, none will be behaving similar to the one uh, with the backend layouts. This is why we have um, the settings here and subpages of this page. So actually this is exactly the same um, situation so that you can say I define a whole tree um, as something which should not be, uh, not be exported, should be excluded from translation. Still you can include one of the um, the other pages of the sub pages again and say okay always included within translations um, these are features that we needed for um, certain api features that we want to provide so that uh, you can actually select stuff and um, pick stuff that you want to send to translation still there should be um, administrators who are able to define which of the parts should definitely not be sent to translations because maybe they even contain content that should not be visible for uh, the public or whatever. So this is one of the new features that we have to provide uh, within the next version. I think we already tested that but we can still uh, run some tests on it. I currently have some problems with my voice so I will try to drink some things. Um, be right back.
Okay, here we go. Hope my voice is better now. Um, hey, nice. I got some water. This is the, the, the good thing when you are in, in your home office, because actually this is really our home office. It's an office which is in the first floor of our home. And um, now Petra was coming and brought me some water. I guess she heard what I said when the, about my voice. It's a nice thing that you are <coughs> in a situation where there are some other people around where you can go to the garden and stuff like that. I really like that. Um, okay, so let's see what we still have to take care of. We have, uh, on the one hand, we have the TR, where you have to upload uh, things. So I have to check if I can actually log in with the Built-in in manager. Login. Yeah, seems to be working. So we have the Elton and manager here. We have some other, not, not some other, just one other extension key here. So uh, we can do something with that. And as you can see, um, there's an Elton and manager here. And we have 31 versions. So this should be the extension that we are maintaining currently. So you can see the last upload was in 2017. So it's definitely more than a year ago. So we have to do something about that, and this will be done today. Okay, so just to show you and to explain how uh, things are connected, we have on the one hand, we have the Alton N Manager in here. And as you can see, we have version 8.2.1 in here, and it has some tags, it has some downloads, uh, not just this version, but uh, the version itself has about 5,000 downloads, but the overall downloads are 33,000. Um, we have a specific version in here. Now this co version is connected to another yeah, kind of re official repository because there is something else in here, which is localization team Elton and manager on packages. And as you can see, we have a version 8.2.1 here too. But this is not just a version number which is written into some files, like for example, I can show you what this is done. Um, for example, when we go to the Elton Manager here, we have the xdmconf.php. And as you can see, we already have a new version here, which is 8.3.1. There was 8.3.0 in between for the people who actually um, were into the close um, beta phase and now we are on 831 I think since there is a new feature um, it should be 84 before we go live with this next version um, the point is this information is just <coughs> available for type of 3 and the type of 3 backend and the TR so this is nothing you can deal with when you are uh, into compose in Composer, we have a Composer JSON here, which is um, providing a version two, um, not a version two, but a version eight three one <laughs> two. So um, you can see um, that this is um, slightly different than the um, XDM conf PHP, and it's uh, but it contains a similar information. So it says, okay, I have some requirements that I need at least to be installed and. There are other things uh, that I want um, to have. For example, all my classes can be found in the classes auto load folder of the localization manager, Elson and manager here. And the point is that this has to be connected to a tag here. So first we have to provide all that stuff that should be visible and usable in the uh, TR. After that, we have to put that into a tag on the repository, which is connected to the packages um, stuff. And unless uh, the packages is um, set up to update the information automatically, we have to update that information here. So people who rely on packages and composer will still have the exact same um, <coughs> version of the localization manager that we are providing in the TR because otherwise you will have different versions 
and people will run into problems or they have to go for dev master uh, to be on a safe site um, so we, there's something uh, that we have to take care of now and I think we can just go on doing exactly that okay so as I saw uh, as I told you we will go for 8.4.0 as the new version and I will just upload that to the localizer web page too, just to be on the safe side. So we have all the package information in there as well. Then we have the uh, XDM conf, which should be 8.4 as well. And I think yeah, we can get rid of the change lot because in the old times it was um, usually done like this so that you have a list of change log entries but as you can see the last line here is chttps git type of 3.org uh, maybe we can replace that now with um, the actual GitLab repository but not the pu uh, private one but the public one so we have that one here of commits there maybe we can even point people to the the actual list of commits which would be done here in the repository we have commits and there should be a branch 80 already so this is um, the way to go when we provide a certain version because uh, the master might be switching to other type of three versions soon. By the way, if you have some questions in between or if you want to give some advice because I do things um, in a way which are which is not supposed to be done or like that. So uh, just feel free to, to um, write something in the chat so I can take uh, care of that. I'll give you some in additional information if you want some. Okay, so we have a change lock here. Oh, this is something that uh, needs to be done later on because currently there's still this old manual um, with a SXW file in there. We should transform that um, to the new way of dealing with um, documentation in Java 3. Um, this is still something that needs to be done. So uh, if you are into documentation actually and if you want to help us out with that and maybe transform things like this uh, like they should be done and you are more into that than I am because currently I just make copies of other documentation files and try to modify them to our needs so um, this is not my favorite toy but um, if you want to help uh, us with that feel free to uh, contact us on Slack or maybe even here in chat or send us a, an email so we can do that together. So currently I won't touch the documentation um, with this old file because it doesn't make much sense when we have to rewrite that um, anyway. Still I will write uh, something into the upload command so that people actually know there is one new feature and where to find it. So I think this should be working and when they uh, take a look in the commits uh, they can actually see uh, what we did for example yeah, make tables restrictable by language to exclude them from exports or exclude or include pages and or sub pages with translations so there is a kind of documentation in the code uh, repository already 
and the rest should be updated later on. Okay, so we have the PHP Storm stuff here now and just up uploading that to the things as well. Just to be on the safe side, I should check if I kept some of the debug um, output in there. So it should be a good idea to search for things like debug utility, for example. Okay, no oh, debug utility in there. Maybe we just left. Yeah, of course. There always is some PHP code left where we have an unused class in there because we did some debug output before. Okay, in this case, um, this is a wanted um, debug utility view array, so uh, we have to keep this um, as is. Yeah, so that's the one with a PHP code, and now I will check for some fluid debuggers. Uh, from debug f dot oh there's nothing in there okay so it seems um the code is more or less clean now and now we have to make sure um that this version is actually put into the right repositories you can do that with php storm um on uh, since i'm on windows i have a git bash there um too so depends on your personal taste I will do this uh, try to do this with uh, PHP Stormer because uh, this is uh, actually the same for you because <laughs> you cannot see the um, the additional windows here so um, I have to push that um, actually commit that and push that to the type of three um, repository no, actually not the type of three repositories the GitLab repositories now and this is what I will do now. So let's see if we can add some git bash window because actually you cannot see the PHP storm um, layers when I go to the um, to git and to push git uh, things there. So I will try to add a window here. Yeah, we have this one. So it seems to be working. I'll try to make it a bit larger so that you can actually see what's going on. Okay. 
it looks a bit weird here because there is a kind of um, cursor jumping around. So do you see that too? If if it's the case, I should try to make it slightly different. So if there's uh, uh, anybody available in the chat, can you just tell me if it's working for you? looks quite good you're still on master because um, the current version of the localization manager is uh, available for CMS 8 uh, so we can work still work on master and then push it to the 8 uh, O branch 2 as soon as we switch to the CMS 9 um, version on master um, CMS 8 versions will only be available within the other branch so you can see that here. No, I just had a git too much in here. Okay. So we have several versions, um, but the latest version, which is uh, actually numbered, is the 8.0. Okay, so. We have a task here, which is set version two eight four zero and create tags accordingly. Yeah, in this case, there is no resolves or fixes or releases uh, line in there. And since we are going to push it um, to the GitLab only and not to the um, type of free Git anymore, um, it doesn't make much sense to take care of this. Still, it would be um, possible to have issues in there where you can um, connect the commits to the issues. Actually, you should do that when you have issues. And this is something maybe we should uh, ch check before we actually uh, push this stuff because I saw there were some issues at least here. So maybe we can actually fix that before we provide a new version. I think I found a bug in Alternate Manager All the Core. We have the following scenario. Create a page and content element. Create a tunnel page translation. Translate the content element in the second language. Now translate the content element in the third language, but select the second language not default as translation original. Now the field L10 and source is different for the two translated elements. Create the L10 element in the configuration with the option translate all content elements on pages on import. Use the option below. Use this if you have trouble with current elements and also for references. If you now use the online translation for the third language, the online translation, okay, there will be a duplicate content limit in this language. This is because the function backend utility get record localization can't find the already translated element because of the end to end source we used for the DB query. If the backend utility get record localization can't find it, might personal guess would be this is a core bug because this is not a function which is provided by the localization manager. 
So currently I don't consider this to be a bug that we have to take care of today. So we can actually go on with a... Um, oh, I can... Uh, I see, I should show you the actual ticket so that you can see it. This is the w one and only issue currently on the localization manager um, repository on GitLab. But um, from my point of view, this is not a um, localization manager bug. We can still check that maybe in the session later on, but I think this should not be something that will hinder us um, while providing the new version now. Okay. So we got that now, and now we have to push that to several uh, repositories. Just let's check mode. We still have the original one um, on github3.org, so I can uh, push that there too. Um, still, this would be something that we will be um, yeah, shutting down in the near future because um, most of the stuff is now moved to GitLab or other people are moving to GitHub and the repositories on type3.org will be abandoned because then we will switch to uh, Composer and other things. And in the long run, I think, as uh, as far as I um, heard it, there will be, uh, there are already plans to switch the whole handling of extensions um, within Type 3 to uh, a Composer style, which should not mean that you have to use Composer on the command line because uh, the extension manager might be rewritten to do things the composer way under the hood but you can still do the same things that you're used to so uh, the idea is to provide everything within repositories um, which are then connected to um, packages and currently the recommendation is if you have several repositories and um, there is something that you can provide without the type of 3 ter slash my extension name way within packages, you should do that because uh, as far as I understood, uh, Helmut Hummel uh, told me that um, that there sh might be performance problems with that server and other problems that you might run into. And uh, when you go to GitLab or GitHub or other repositories, um, these problems won't happen that much. Okay, so let's try to push. In this case, we need to add refs for master, if I remember correctly. Yeah, now we can check that in the browser if things went fine. This is, for example, still the right repository here. And as far as I know, it's not the one we should go to review type3.org. because it's, of course, not yet in the Git repository, <coughs> but just in the review process, because then it has to be um, signed by people who are allowed to give it a plus two, and then it will be moved to the repository. Okay, so we have a change log. Can check that here now. Yeah, these were changes for the GitHub repository, which is right. And we have the language restriction collection thingy, which was just slightly changed. We have some changes in the tools section, which is just removing the debug utility because this was too much in there. Then we have the composer JSON. And 
Looks okayish to me. So I have to sign in here, give myself a plus two. Actually, this is not the way it's supposed to be. I know that, but um, since we are switching to other um, repositories anywhere, way where you don't need this um, review process anymore, uh, it makes much more sense to go there because. Um, Currently, I'm just simulating the same behavior. Fun fact is that we had a communication workshop once uh, where we uh, discussed the way we are working in Type 3 with some people from OSS Watch. It's, I think, five or six years ago. And they told us uh, that some of the problems that we have in type of three to find people who actually want to work with us or are able to work with us together with us and to contribute is that we are kind of they call it paranoid um i would not call it th that bad but um they basically told us we are kind of control freaks and we want to make sure that everything is right and there are no mistakes made and only the best code makes it to the to the repository while well, other projects, which are much larger and much more important for the whole web, um, are working in a completely different approach where you can just push stuff and if it's broken, just push something new and fix it because that's it's open source. So I think we are moving a bit to the other approach when we go to GitLab and GitHub and have issues there. And still the, you have uh, to have pull requests because not everybody will be allowed to push something to the repos but we have we don't have this voting process and this control process that much anymore I, I really like that okay we have a reply plus two so I think I should be able this is a new interface I see it's completely different to the way I'm used to but I think there is some submit yeah this should be working now Okay, so when we go to the git window now, this should be, and yeah, maybe I can switch to the window without the cam, so you can see more of what's actually going on. But I have to copy and paste the whole window there so that you can actually see it. better this way so if we did everything right we should see something like fetch origin yeah there have been some changes in master check if we are on the right hash in here so we have f1 f1 and an origin master we already have f1 f1 too so let's push that to the private and the public repository now because they're currently on the same state they, they have not been too many changes uh, in the private version lately because uh, most of the page stuff has been done already um, push private master okay 
same thing for public. Okay. And now we can check if this actually made it to the repository. At least um, there should be something in here. When we go to the repository commit section, I would expect the latest commit there now. Yeah, set version to 840 and create tags accordingly. Fine. Uh, same thing should be within here. Yeah. So this already worked as ex expected. And now we can go to the 80 branch and do the same thing. Push origin head refs for uh, actually sh it should be possible to do that within the um, within the Chrome window and within the thing here because as far as I remember there is an option to make a cherry pick here and then say uh, uh, check a no, not check, but select a destination branch, which would be 8.0. And we do the cherry pick. We can reply here with another plus two. Send that and submit that. Okay. And now there should be a change when we fetch the repository. It fetch origin Yep. Check out eight O get pull origin eight O. Now we can could push that to the private branch two. Now the idea is to give that a tag so that we can tell packages later on, hey, we are have we got something new here because currently when we just update this one, you will see there might be a change uh, in the dev master date. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the date is already changed, but um, packages is not aware yet that there is a new version because this is uh, relying on tags. So the new tag should be 840. And this is something that we can, uh, actually I should show you <laughs> this so that we can remove the window here. Okay, and then we have Chrome here. And as you can see, there is 10 of March in here, but for only for DevMaster. And there is no version 840 yet. So now we have to make that version available by tagging it. And as you can see, we have all the tags already in here. And when we want to create a new tag, it's just git tag 840. And then you push the tags to the repositories. So this one would be origin minus minus tags it should be pushing the tag to the type of 3 GitLab. Yep. Same thing for private and public.
and public okay and now when we go to the packages page and press the update button there should be a new tag in this section here and this means everybody who is on composer could be using the new version 8.4.0 already still it will not be available in the TR yet this is something that we have to do as, a, as, the, as the final step now first we will do the update here and as you can see we have 8.4.0 here now and this means 8.4.0 is available for the Composer users already. So if you're a Composer and you want to update your Elton M Manager to 8.4.0 now, you can do it now. Okay, um, now we have to create the upload version for um, Tab 3 itself. So I think the easiest way will be to just Sync that with the one on our server. Because if I remember correctly, there's still the option to provide, um, not to, to provide, but to download extensions directly from the back end. I think it's this button yeah, download as zip yeah so we can just sync um, the current version with the type of three backend this is something that you actually cannot see because this is one of these additional PHP storm windows which is excluded from the uh, streaming view These are synced now when we just clear the cache here to a reload. This should be changing from 8.3.1 to 8.4.0. Oh. Yeah, worked fine. Just checking if there are some configuration issues in here. No, everything same as before and now we can just download that version and then upload it to the TER the only thing you have to make sure is that um, you remove the timestamp from the download name because the upload to the TR will be just the extension name underline and then three numbers separated with a dot which is 8.4.0 and then dot zip so this should be the name of the file that you're uploading just put this in the right place now Okay, and as you remember, we have the localization manager in here, and we are logged in as the localization manager maintainer, so we are allowed to upload extension versions here. And this means click on the upload button, and you guess. Uh, what I actually told you is please note that a version number in XEMConf must match the version number in the file name. That's ex exactly what I told you. So we have the extension key here, then we have the numbers, then we have the zip, and that's it. Um, you don't have to do it this way because if you have the um, extension installed, which is hopefully the case because you wanted to test it before you upload it to the TR, uh, then you can do it the way I showed you. you. Just go to the extension manager, download it, and that's it. Um, then you just have to remove the other timestamp. Um, 
Okay, so we have a file that we want to use here. Just have to pick that. Should be Alten and Manager 840.zip. Description for this version. Um, maybe we can just check the commit list before I wi write the com uh, description here because we don't have a fully fledged um, documentation available. So it at least we should uh, give the people some information about what has been going on in the last month. So as we can see, As a, if I remember correctly, the latest upload was here, prepare new release. So we have um, the uh, another version number. We have consider parent-child relations and remove children from command map. We have uh, remove null values from item list to avoid debug output. Okay, this is something uh, which is n not um, a new feature or uh, something we have to take care of. Um, deprecated stuff. Other uh, static info table versions use namespaces and correct path. So these are just bug fixes in most of the cases. Okay, so the only actual new feature is the one with the restrictable languages uh, for uh, tables and um, exclude or include pages and sub pages with translations and the rest seems to be bug fix and version numbering and some documents and correct table names okay Maybe this one is something we can uh, specifically um, mention in the upload. Child relations are treated properly now, and you can exclude or include pages from specific languages. configure as a field call we can just check that so it will be more clear what happens there actually it's pages and other records specific but configured I can show you that later on how um, we are doing this actually okay so we have this one 
hopefully it's not too long so it will be visible um, in the upload section maintenance version containing lots of bug fixes and two new features chart relations are treated properly now you can exclude include should be a low case i pages and records from configured tables from translation to specific languages c um GitLab commits list for changes. Okay, now we can say upload extension. Oh, this was quite fast. It feels as if some people really did something great about Topaz Reader or Glad some of the things that took hours, um, literally, um, are now much faster. So uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, I was part of one of the sessions of the Topaz Reader Org. Maybe I can even take part in more sessions um, this year. But um, what the team already achieved is quite awesome. So we have the alternate manager here now. Thank you for the upload. You have one expiring extension keys. Please have a look. Okay, so we can just check that. Alternate M. I don't know exactly when and why this key was registered because I didn't do it myself, but I will just click on keep now. This is something which happens regularly so that uh, pe people are checking, uh, actually the machine is checking um, if some of your extension keys are actually used and if they are not used, you get messages like this. Um, okay, so let, let's see if the localization manager is already available, not yet. It takes a um, few minutes until the caches are cleared and other things happen there. So what we can do now is at least change some information in here because then we can already lead people to the right um, links and to the right repositories into the tracker. So actually the public tracker would be on Codus Care Elton and Manager issues. And of course, the repository then is this one. And there is no external manual yet, but there might be a sponsoring link. And we can add some tags, but actually these are already in there. Should be fine. Just checking for the sponsoring link. I think I will go for the web page. Okay, if you've never seen one of our um, SLAs that we are actually offering, maybe you can go to that page too. It's coders.care. Um, so if you want to buy a service level agreement for specific extensions, this would be the way to go. If you have some questions about these, I can still give some additional answers. So feel free to use uh, the chat window for that too. Okay, so we have this one, we have the link to the repository, the link to the issue tracker, I confirm the extension is published on packages and I maintain the packages, the package, which is um, a new checkbox um, because as I already uh, told you and showed you um, packages and other composer related things will be the way to go in the future. Uh, actually today, not just the future. But you can still do it the old school way, but this will be removed later on. S um, 
close. Okay, we have 32 new versions here now, so it should be visible in the TR now. Yeah, here we go. So if you find this extension useful, you can, uh, there's a new feature on Java3.org, um, which is giving you the option to just like the Altern Engine. Of course, I like my own extension, so I give it a heart now. Um, donate and give kudos code insights found an issue so we can test the links now this is code as care code insight is the and Elton manager tree master found an issue is gitlab and the extension manager is still here and rendered from the um the old file but uh, we definitely should change that and uh, rework that but this will not happen within this version um actually it has not happened because we already uploaded it but this is something that we can do uh, later on. Okay, so this was the first step for today. We uploaded, uh, created and uploaded a new version of the localization manager to type3.org to uh, the different repositories and we made it available on Packagist. So we will have a short break now and I will be right back.